towering over me right now is the iconic National Theatre. Commissioned in 1992 by the government of Ghana at the time, the National Theatre continues to be home to some of the biggest gospel concerts, musical events, theatre productions, stage plays and many more. It is also the place where a lot of Ghanaian actors got their first break. Happening tonight is The Gods Are Not To Be running for the fourth time in less than six months. I'm here to check out how it feels like to see a play at the National Theatre. This is my first time of seeing a play. I've always been here to watch Uncle Lebo. And we, I really got enthused when I listened to Aboji's interview with uh, Chairman General sometime this week. Then I said, let me go have a look at it. All right, so I just saw the house lights go out. It means that the show is about to go down. Curtains are still down, though. But in some few minutes, we're going to see the gods are not to blame for the fourth time. Exciting. Can't wait. <laughs> If you think to have heavy suspicion is wisdom, then your head is not well. Ha! How grips my heart as I discover how King Adetusa, who ruled this land before me, was killed. Hi, so what are your thoughts on the show? Uh, that was brilliant. Uh, never seen anything like this before. Uh, it was authentic. Uh, I assume. Uh, I think I, I heard about this book back when I was in primary school. But I never read it, so it was nice actually not being able to predict what was going to happen. Enjoy the show. So. so on a scale of one to ten, would you would you come back here to see another Gods Are Not To Blame? Oh yeah, I would, I would, I would. Well, um, I, I love the play itself. It's probably mm. Then the the director gave it a different vision. Like the, the, I've, I've watched it several, but this particular uh, vision for the for the play is it good. It's, yeah, it's good. It's, it's different. Huh? And every single time I came to watch it, I I saw a different play. Right. Yeah. True, true. How often do you come and see plays here? Almost every time. Every time? This is my household. <laughs> <laughs> That's too Almost much. That's a scale of one to ten. How um, would you come back to see a play here? I would. Yeah, I would if I if I have a chance. I don't know when I'm going to be back here, but absolutely, I would. Um, if Donto is not able to join the production this time around, fortunately, I've seen it uh, in December. I liked it. Um, I like the partnership that. April Communication, Shoko's uh, company, and George Quiz, Mitch Bureau had put together. So I said, why not? Let me give it a try. Um, naturally, filling David Donto's shoes would be a tough one, but of course, you have to put your mind to it, especially given the time that it was a short period where you had to uh, put one or two together. But yeah, uh, the people like it. Who am I to say no? This story, I think for a lot of Ghanaians who have been through the secondary school system, you know, we have a personal connection to this play because um, we read it in, in, for core literature in secondary school and it's, it's one of the most fascinating stories. I think ever written by an African. Um, of, of course, it is it is a run of Oedipus complex, one of the very like complex Greek stories. Every time we do it, I'm very like like I want it to be perfect. And thank God for a wonderful cast, a fantastic director, George Quay, and pretty much everyone who works on this play. We all give it our 200 percent, and it shows. So. Like the fair one. Oh, you, you you every time you like something that is fair. Yes, I like fair. So, uh, look, I don't discriminate. Oh, I like the come, fair one. Come, come. Come. What is it? Just stand here. 
Why should I stand we'll here? Stand, we'll talk to you later. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, Agidi, let me. You will live long. Hey. Uh, hey, young woman. Uh, Oti, we will meet. Uh, uh, let's uh, go. Uh, uh, you will meet at Palm Wine. Uh, uh, eh? mm -hmm. hey. 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 Let me go and see my wife. After nearly almost three hours of uh, dialogue, shouting, screaming, th tears, uh, laughter, the show is over. Overall, I enjoyed myself. I recommend it. Uh, it makes for a perfect time out with some friends or even on a solo date. That's about it. It's time to go home. My name is Godwin Nambo and you're watching The Afternoon Show. All right, welcome back. This is The Afternoon Show. And just like we mentioned earlier, we are talking table manners and etiquette on the show today. What are some of the table manners and etiquette you know? And also a question of the day hovers around the funniest experience you've had when it comes to using the cutlery set. Because sometimes we make certain mistakes and then you find it very funny. We want you to share those experiences with us. But in studio with me this afternoon is Evelyn Akpene. Bunny and uh, she's a lecturer in hospitality and uh, also a hospitality consultant. And to Evelyn, you're welcome to the afternoon show. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. And okay. you? I'm well too. Um, I'm sitting first of all. Is it is it okay when it comes to table manners? Um, yes, your posture must be straight up. Even when you're eating, you have to sit straight yes, up. Yes. Okay. Looks like it's it's going to be. A long one this afternoon. But when we talk about table manners and etiquette, as a lecturer in hospitality, what would you say etiquette and table manners are? Okay, table etiquettes are the codes or the rules governing how you eat at table. That's a formal dining. Okay. Yes, so the table manners are the, behavior, the behaviors that we... Um, how we take, uh, behave... At table. Okay. Yes. All right. But what are also some of the things we ordinarily do not have to do when we are sitting, I mean, on a table like this? What are some of the things you do not have to do at all? Okay. You're not supposed to put your elbows on the table like oh. this when the food arrives. Okay. You're not supposed to do that. And then also, your nappy is supposed to be on your lap okay. when you are eating your food. In case you are eating and your cutlery drops, you're not supposed to pick it up. So then what do I do? You signal the waiter or whoever to bring you one. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. But um, before we even get into the don'ts, I see we have a beautiful setup here. Yes. And uh, I'm, I'm really wondering, so if you can run us through some of the things we have here. And ordinarily, should this be the average table yes. setup? Yes, this is a three-course table setup. Okay. So we have a three-course meal, we have the starters, we have the main meal, and we have the desserts. So we have the soup spoon, usually soups are starters, and salads are starters as well. So we have the soup spoon, which is for your soup. It can be any soup, light soup, cream soup, any soup at all, any light soup. And then we have the salad knife as well. Salad knife? knife yes. Okay. The salad knife is supposed to go with the salad Fork. Okay, so maybe yes. we can pick it up so our viewers can. It's, it's okay. okay. Table yes. manager, can, we yes. can pick it up we, for them to yes, see, we right? Can. Okay. So this is it. Okay. This is the salad fork, fork and, and knife. Yes. Okay. And then the next one is our dinner fork and then our, our dinner fork and our dinner knife. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so this is what we use for the main meal. But you know, they look too similar. How do you tell the, the difference between the, sizes, the salad? The sizes. Okay. Yes, the sizes. The, the salad fork is smaller than the dinner, dinner Okay, the dinner fork. Yes. So that is the difference. That's how you yes. know which one to use yes. for which one. But you know also, some of us, um, the soup spoon, we end up using it maybe for your rice or for even the main meal itself. So how do we know the differences in the, the spoon? Because this looks a bit rounded yes. and more protruding. The soup spoon is deeper. Okay. So it helps you to fetch the soup. soup yes, and then enjoy it. Yes. Okay, that's uh, well understood. What uh, I can see we have some uh, plates as well. So if you can run us through okay, that. Okay, this is our side plate. So in case you are eating and there is a bone in your food, okay. you can just drop it on your side plate. This is our water glass. 
And then this is our wine glass. This is a white wine glass. Uh, Evelyn, you know these, these wine glasses, they look almost the same. Yes. So you may go for an event and then you end up putting the wine in the water glass instead. So how do we tell the difference between a wine glass and a water glass? Okay, usually you wouldn't be serving yourself. Mm -hmm. The waiters know how to go about it. If you are taking, you are drinking, everybody knows that uh, at a point in your dining, you would need water. So the first glass that is right on top of your dinner knife okay. is your water glass. Okay. And then the glass that comes on top of your your salad knife okay. or your soup spoon is any of the wines so we have red wines and mm -hmm. white wines okay depending on what you eat you are eating then you choose that wine so if you're eating fishes or a yeah, fish meal you are using you will take white wine why, why is it so yes um what if i don't like white wine your the the meal you are eating demands that it's white wine that goes well with that food. So <laughs> red meat goes with red wine. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's a discovery. Those are, those are codes. There are rules governing it, so you can't uh, do otherwise. You can't yes. do otherwise. otherwise. It's part of the table yes. manners. Okay. And um, what else do we have on our table as so well? So we have our dessert fork okay. and our dessert spoon. Okay. So because it's a three course meal, the last meal we are eating is the dessert. So if you have ice cream, you can use a dessert spoon. If you have maybe a cupcake or a slice of cake, you can use the, the fork. Okay. Um, we also have this right here. This is our soup spoon, soup bowl. Our soup bowl. bowl. This is strictly for soups. Yes. But can this also um, take a salad or maybe any of our desserts or this is strictly this, for our soups? This is strictly for our soups. Strictly soup. for our soups. Yes. And this underneath? Uh, this is our dinner plate. So okay. this boy will be eating the main meal. Okay. So Evelyn, most of us also think that this particular one is supposed to be holding a... Uh, plates or you know uh what this particular one is the soup bowl so it's supposed to hold this like this mm -hmm. and when we're about to have a main meal the other plates so meaning it will be wider and then put it in but you said this we have this to eat a, this is a soup bowl and this is a dinner this, plate yes. okay well understood but let's also get into table manners okay apart from how you have to sit what are some of the other table manners we have to um, exhibit when we are at dinner or having lunch or any time we sit by our tables? Okay, so in case we are together and you have the salt and pepper by your side, mm -hmm. I don't have to stretch to pick it up. I just ask you to please pass it to me Okay. and then you do so. Okay. If um, in case I'm eating and I need to sneeze, Mm -hmm. I just have to cover my mouth, my mouth with my left hand, not my right hand. Yes. And also, a lot of people um, have issues with this napkin. Yes. Uh, where does a napkin go? Is it supposed to, you know, be on our laps, or we're supposed to use it for our hands? What exactly do we use it's a napkin for? It's supposed to for? be on our laps. It's supposed to help you protect your dress. Okay. So whilst you are eating and something is falling, mm -hmm. particles of food are falling. It will fall on your the napkin okay it's not supposed to stain your dress so it's supposed to be here not here or here exactly some mm -hmm. people use it it looks like a, a babe, babe. <laughs> <laughs> but you know so, some others also as they are eating it's actually here then they just wipe their yes usually before you put when you, everything we do at table has a meaning so if you happen to you are getting up for, okay you are done eating and you want to signal the waiter that I'm done, you can put the napkin on your left. He knows, he's trained, so he knows that if the napkin is on my left side or on the table, it means you are done. Yes. So what if mistakenly I put it by my left and then the, the waiter decides to come and clear my plate when I'm not done? <laughs> How do I let the waiter know that, sorry, sorry, I am not, I'm not, maybe I don't even know that putting it here means that I'm done. That's the essence of etiquette. That's why we all must know the do's and don'ts that we have to go by when we are dining. So when it's on the right, does it have a meaning as well? No, it's when on your chair, when you are stepping out, like you have to use the washroom, you can drop it on your chair and then pull your chair 
to be and beneath your table. table. Okay. So in case he comes around or anyone comes around and sees it, you know that you'll be back. Okay, this is my first time hearing this. <laughs> I didn't know. Also, um, I read somewhere that even with how we place our fork and knife, uh, whether I'm not done with the food, I'm done with the food, okay, I want to do this, I want to do that. There are ways to also send a message to a waiter uh, just looking at how you place your fork and knife. So if we can get into that so we understand. Okay, I have to go here. Okay. okay. So if you want to tell the waiter that you are done, you place the cutlery facing up. Okay, so I take the dinner. Okay. We eat from outside in. Okay. So we, we just the, put in like yes, this. Like this. Then it means you are finished. You are done with your meal. If you'll be back, so you are pausing for a while. If he sees it this way, he knows that you are not done, so he cannot clear your table. Okay. Yes. And which other way? Or these are the only so, two No, ways. these are not the way. So if the, you want to tell the waiter that the food was great, you enjoyed your meal, you can oh. put it this way. Okay. So he knows that you actually enjoyed your meal. And then if you didn't enjoy your meal, mm -hmm. You can do it this way. That is very, very delicious. Especially <laughs> when the food wasn't nice. Yes. You have to what, put it in the second or what? The first one? Or any of, them? any of them. Okay, Just like this. Like this. Then he knows that you didn't enjoy your I, meal. And this, then, I, need to, I need to use it. <laughs> I would, really need to. It would come to. for feedback from you why you didn't enjoy your meal. What went wrong at table? Okay. And so these are the three? We've mentioned four. Five. Okay, four, five. Five. four or five. Okay. Yeah. I hope you are taking notes so that when you go for um, dinner next time, you know exactly what you're doing. But apart from uh, these other ones, can we do same with any of the other cutlery sets? Or is no, just no, this? These are the, the two, these are the main cutleries we use for the main meal. Okay. So these are the ones that we use. Okay. Mm. Huh. Well, um, same way, I have a lot of questions for Evelyn. I'm sure you at home, you have a lot of questions as well. And we will be activating the phone lines so you call in. But we were on the street to find out from you uh, what you think about table manners, etiquette, and also your experiences as well. Take a listen. Um, my first time trying to use a cutlery, so my mom held my hand to use to teach me how to use it and then i remember back at shs i was asked to use the cutlery set to cut a chicken and i couldn't do it it was very hard it was very hard it was very hard i almost embarrassed myself but i watched the way they were using this and i was and i learned it uh, i went to a restaurant and they gave me food to eat but uh, that was my first time using the and cutting the chicken was quite difficult. So I ended up letting the chicken fall with the with the knife and the fork falling off. And everybody around my table in the dining hall were just laughing at me. I did a lot of practice in the house before going to the college. So for me, in fact, I didn't find it difficult. But I really loved that friends who couldn't use the cutlery. That chicken experience is one you do not pray to have because some, some meats can be very difficult to cut. But Evelyn, how do you cut chicken so well that it will not fall off your plate? Okay. How do you use the, the, the fork and knife appropriately? Okay, so you pick up the fork. Your index finger should be on top. Okay. And then you stack it in more like what holds the meat together. Mm -hmm. Then you can cut up and then you put it in your mouth. Okay. This way. So you use it to pin down the meat so mm -hmm. that it doesn't displace <laughs> you. And then you cut it up and then it goes into your mouth. You see how we are easily cutting it? Yes. In a switch it where it's proper, proper meat that is hard. Evelyn, how do you do it? You still have to go the same way, but you cut it up into pieces. Okay. So you take your time. Okay. Um, when you are eating at dinner, because the dishes are in courses, you must have at least two hours time. Take your time and enjoy your meal. You're not rushing anyway. So just take your time and cut it up. If you are rushing, you get nervous mm -hmm. and everyone around you gets to know that you are not comfortable mm -hmm. with the cutlery. So you just pin it down, take your time, cut it into pieces. If you get it, it's, uh, the piece is too, still too big, 
it cuts cut it, cut it again and then you put it in your mouth. So in a situation where you are at table and then you are trying to use a fork and knife but it's, it's not working, okay. are you allowed to use your, your hands if you want to? It depends. You can use only the fork. Mm -hmm. If you're, the knife that is giving you trouble, you can use only the fork. But you have, you have to cut some meat. Yeah. And you, you can't use just the, 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 the fork to cut that meat. Maybe you have to, you have to, you don't have to eat the meat that day. <laughs> but you know, some people also come for dinner and then um, they eat just a small portion yes, of the yes, meal yes, and yes. then carry the rest, Where's put it in their bag and then take it home. Is it allowed? Is it, is it correct table manners to no, do that? No, please. It's not. It's not. What if you can't eat all the food or you have family at home you want to? So usually if you are at table and then um, you can signal them that you, you are full either you are full mm -hmm. you can't eat enough so you would want your meal packed okay so you might either take only the salad okay. or the soup okay then they know that you've not gone through the entire course and you still want to pack something home okay let's also talk about etiquette okay. uh, is there a difference between table manners and etiquette etiquette are the codes that governs how you eat and then the manner is the proper way of doing it. So, quotes mm -hmm. that guide you in eating well mm -hmm. or practicing it well. Okay. That's the breakdown, That's the, the breakdown, breakdown of etiquette. etiquette. And what are some of the things we, we have to do that will let people know that, okay, yeah, this, this, this lady, she has proper etiquette. Um, is it manners or yes. skills? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, when you get to table, even how you lift your your napkin, napkin mm -hmm. and then place it on your lap you pull your chair closer to you so that the gap between you and then the table is mm -hmm. not too wide oh yes it also helps that the food particles don't fall mm -hmm. on you or you don't spill anything whilst in the process yeah. of eating yes another thing is that when somebody asks you for salt and pepper mm -hmm. you don't, salt is that salt? You don't only give the person only salt, but you pass both salt and pepper. It's part of the etiquette. And then when you are at table and um, you think there's a meat stuck in your, your teeth. teeth, you don't have to do that in the presence of everyone. So you step, you go out and then you sort yourself up and come back. Evelyn, <laughs> but you know, there are toothpicks and all of that. So yes. we don't have to use a toothpick Pick, no, at the you table? Have to, no, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that at all. Wow. So what, what then? Do you, you step out and then when you go and, and you use do, the toothpick? Then come back, and yes. And then when you are chewing, you don't chew with your mouth open. You have to close your mouth. And then chew. chew. Yes, and then somebody shouldn't... You don't have to make noise while chewing. you are chewing. Yes, so those are some of the... Wow, okay. Huh. But Evelyn, you know we go to certain restaurants and uh, the, there's a beautiful setup and all of that. But there are seats sometimes. You have a sofa and then a small table and you struggle to even eat. How do you handle it? And is it even right to have that kind of um, setup in a restaurant? It depends on who their clientele are. Every business has their clientele, who their target market is. So. In a three-star hotel, four-star hotel, definitely their clientele are the elite mm -hmm. or the yeah, average, middle average people. Okay. So you know that they wouldn't like to sit behind a sofa yeah. and be eating. Even, they wouldn't go to a chop bar in the first place mm -hmm. to be eating. So the setup of your facility speaks volumes about your establishment and who you are ready to serve. Okay, but you know, growing up as well in our homes, we don't have this kind of setup. I mean, you, you, your mom would just dish your food for you. We sit on the floor. You can sit eat. on the floor. You can sit by any table. You can sit yeah. anywhere and eat. Is this a standard for every home? Should every home, at least, yeah. averagely, should we have this setup at home when we want to eat? At least, we have to train the children on how to use the cutlery. Okay. Because charity begins at home. Etiquette, following etiquette makes you confident. It helps you to fit in mm -hmm. into gatherings. If you know how to handle the cutlery very well, you can be confident and eat anywhere. Okay. 
as you said, somebody, because the person struggles with cutting up the fish or the chicken, mm -hmm. the person doesn't want to even yeah. eat it. Yeah. So it builds confidence yeah. in you yourself and even the children. So I think it's something we should all uh, look at seriously yeah. and then um, practice as well okay. at home and all that. Okay, so that's why the afternoon show is here for you as well. I mean, even if you're not taught at home, um, you can take a thing or two from us right here. But we're taking a quick spin. When we come back, we're still on table manners and etiquette right here on the afternoon show. Do stay. Welcome back. And this is the afternoon show. We're talking table manners and etiquette. Well, we had our table set um, uh, previously. Well, if you just joined us, well, you've missed quite a lot. But we're about to get into uh, the practicals, how to use your fork and knife to cut uh, your meat, uh, how to chop up things nicely at the table. I'm still here with Evelyn, a lecturer in hospitality, and also um, she's well versed in this field. And so, Evelyn, um, uh, we have here some jollof. We have some... Um, samosas, we have some burgers, and we have a uh, salad, and we have some turkey and goat's meat as well. The very hard one. How then do you dish out food when you are served like this? Okay. So with, we start with the salad. Okay. And then we are supposed to have a little to, we are not supposed to use the cutlery that you are using to eat. Okay. To so, I mean, from, ordinarily the restaurant will give you yes, something to scoop? Yes. Okay. So, then you scoop your portion. Okay. And then so we are using the salad, salad fork. fork. Okay. Yes. So, to so scoop just a little. Okay. Yes. And then, um, so, this is our salad knife as okay. well. So, this is already mashed up with mayonnaise. So, this way... And then, okay. So wait, the salad. We actually also have to use an, especially with this that you can easily scoop. Yes, you still you have, have to use, use the knife yes. when eating the salad. Yes. Wow. Okay. If it was all leaves, we just tuck it in. Yeah. Cut it up and then. Okay. Looks like I'll have to try this and then you tell me if I'm correct or <laughs> if I'm wrong. So. Uh, look at what you did. What I scooped just a little okay. like this. Okay. Put it in here. Is that enough? Okay. And then what? I take my knife, yeah. which is this one, like this. Yeah. Take a little bit like this. And what? Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Absolutely tasty. After our starters, what then do we get into? So, we have samosas. Samosas are finger foods mm -hmm. that you can easily pick with your hands. If you have bread, actually breads go with salad yeah. as well. So, if it's only bread, you just break a piece, you butter with it. With your hands? hands yes. You nice. don't use the cutlery you to... You know, since, I, since I'm people, you, you use the knife no, to you eat don't the use bread. the cutlery <laughs> to... Cut it up. You are supposed to break the bread. Okay. So the portion that you can easily put in your mouth, you butter it and then you are good, good to, to go. go. And the, the samosas, you can also, also take it with your hands. Hand. So if eat. you have a tissue, tissue as well, you can use the tissue. Even if you don't have a tissue, you before you eat, you are mm -hmm. supposed to have washed your hands or applied some sanitizer and you are good to go. You should be able to use your hand. To just take okay. it and then you're good to go. Yes. That's it. Yes. All right. If For some of us, we clean. sometimes also like yes. to use, use the tissue, the tissue to fine. just pick it up and yes. then that's it. Okay. So from the um, finger foods and all of that, we get into the main meal. Yes. So the main meal is we have a jollof rice. Mm -hmm. yes. So you take a portion as well. We would borrow our soup spoon. Okay. Because we don't have a little here. Okay. And then... Just a scoop, yes. and then you're good to, to go, go just a little yeah. bit. Okay. Yes. Looks like I'll try what you just did, Okay. and then see how it goes. Yeah. And then you have to be marking you so that I know if I'm on point mm -hmm. or I am not doing it properly, so that, yeah. Some Ghana jollof. Yeah. This, uh, where can we, after you're done scooping, it comes here? Yes. Oh, go excellent. On the side. Okay. Yes. All right. Nice one. Okay. So I can bring this also here because I'm done yes, with, with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. So then what? We get into our meat yes. as well. 
Okay. So that you can use the main meal, um, the fork for that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The meat. Okay. It looks. It looks hard. <laughs> yeah. This is where yeah. I am interested in. in. So we see how to properly handle handle the the, yeah. the 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 meat. So how do we cut it? Okay. So your index finger on. You hold it firmly, and then you cut. You cut up. So this, this if is this, not too hard. Okay. If, if this is sizable enough, mm -hmm. you can chew it. Or if it's still big, big yes, you can cut it up. Okay. And then you are good to go. You pick it up and yes, then. Yes, you are good to go. See, it's, it's a bit, okay, let me, let me try it. And then yes. this way. Yes. Okay. You, That's it. Oh, wow. That's it. And then? Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice one. But how do we also use the napkin to clean our mouths and all of that? Okay, so just use the tip. Mm -hmm. Just pat gently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So finally, before you go, um, what are some of the things you think, as Ghanaians, we do that are so wrong at table that we have to stop. Extremely wrong. So using the phone. Using the phone, phone at... You're supposed to... A dinner table is a way of communicating. You're having... You can, you can even have meetings, mm -hmm. formal meetings over dinner or over lunch. Mm -hmm. So you're not supposed to be on your phone when you're having such... You're not meeting. even checking Instagram for just one second. No. If you want to take pictures briefly, you can all agree and take one or two pictures and you go back to your meal. So you put your phones away. You're not supposed to be using your phones whilst you are eating. This table you are shaking. I am on it. <laughs> I want this table. <laughs> well, Evelyn, it's been um, great doing this with you. And I really, really know that our viewers have learned a whole lot. Um, also, Let's uh, quickly, before you go, quick, quick, quick one. When you're done with all of this, um, in terms of even getting up, how do you, because sometimes you may end up shaking the table or things will just make noise a bit when you're trying to get up. How do you get up nicely, especially when it's a packed space and then all of that? Just pull the chair behind you and okay. then you can just step up. Like this and then yes, you put yes, this? This on your left side. Okay. And then you are good. To and go. you're good to yeah. go. Bravo. Thank you so much, Welcome. Evelyn. This has been very insightful. We're talking table manners and etiquette right here on the afternoon show. And you can drop your comments on our Facebook feed as well. This is the afternoon show. We're taking a quick break. When we come back, there's more right here on the show. Welcome back to the afternoon show. Anita enjoying herself with that conversation. Look, it's not fair, but it's okay. It's time to get into uh, some business. And we haven't seen this man here for a while. Mr. Ogodu is here to tell us what's happening in the business world. Senior yeah. man. Yeah, shout out uh, to do eating free food. I, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Charlie. I mean, it comes to the job sometimes. Nice. Yeah. yeah, what's good? Yeah, we're good, we're good, good. So uh, today we are talking about this whole, what is the home monetary policy and committee announcements and stuff like that. So today we are going to, as much as possible, demystify all of it. Mm. I need to cool down. It's not a class. <laughs> <laughs> so every now and then you'd hear, every two months you'd hear the Bank of Ghana announce that its policy, the Monetary Policy Committee is meeting to announce some figures. Mm. We are going to look at what it actually means and why you should be concerned if you've taken a loan or are planning on doing so. Hmm. Right. What it actually yeah. means. So first of the Monetary Policy uh, is basically the rate at which the central bank lends to banks. Ah. Simply that. Simply so that. The monetary policy rate is basically the rate at which the Bank of Ghana lends to other banks. By extension, that will also not influence how much the banks will give you loans. Right. At what rate they will give you the loan. Right. Because I won't give you, of course, a loan cheaper than I borrowed it. Indeed. So that's basically what it means. So every time you hear the Monetary Policy Committee announcing a new rate, they're basically telling you that over the next two months, this is how much Bank of Ghana will lend to banks. Mm. And that would then now decide, influence how much the banks will also, by extension, lend to you. 
So if you listen to the news on Monday, it was announced that the monetary policy rate is not, has been maintained at 29 percent. It meant that between the last announcement and this recent one, the rate has stayed the same at 29 percent. Okay. So that means that the average rate at which Bank of Ghana lends to banks now is 29 percent. So it means that you shouldn't expect a loan below 29 percent. Right. Makes sense. Why can't we borrow straight from the central bank? <laughs> <laughs> So basically, that's, that's what the monetary policy mm. uh, means. Mm. Now, we look at the constituents of the committee who make the announcement okay. to see um, who are those who are there. Of course, you see reps from the Bank of Ghana. The governor of the central bank is the chairman of the committee. He decides, he and then some members from the deputy, two deputy governors and some two other people who are well versed in the whole monetary policy conversation. Because you know there's also an economic side of it, the mm -hmm. rate at which banks, uh, the rate at which loans are given in the country, how mm -hmm. it also affects, for instance, um, businesses who will go to borrow and the likes. So we look at the constituents of the policy, uh, the monetary policy committee. We have the first and second deputy governors. The governor of the Bank of Ghana is the chairman. We have the head of the monetary policy analysis of the BOG, the head of banking operations of the BOG, and then two other persons appointed by the Minister of Finance, who should have some relevant experience to uh, bring to bear on the committee. So you see basically that uh, these are all, for, for uh, lack of better, stalwarts in the whole banking operations who can help uh, in putting their heads together to decide finally what will be the favorable rates at which bank, the G Bank of Ghana should lend to banks. So why should you even care about this, like we explained earlier? <laughs> if you are planning of going for a loan, this rate would help inf you understand how much you are likely to pay for a loan. Mm. And if you've already taken a loan, and your loan, there are two uh, rates at which you could borrow. There's the fixed rate, and then there's the floating rate. The fixed rate means that the rate that was prevailing at the time you took the loan is mm -hmm. how much That's you will pay no matter yeah. what. Yeah. But if you're on the floating rate, rate when the rate drops, it means that when the monetary policy rate drops, it means that you pay lower. You pay you pay a little lesser right. based on the drop. So you also have to be aware of what of which of the rates you are using from your bank <laughs> or your bank is offering you, so that you'll be able to understand that okay, when it drops, I'm expecting some drop. Are, are we following? Absolutely. <laughs> it's a risk, so, so 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 if you've taken a loan, you should be keen, and you're on a floating. You should be keen to know. Uh, what the rate, uh, what the current announcement is. If it announces a reduction, you know that, of course, you benefit from some uh, reduction. Why should I be concerned? So like we explained earlier, it influences the cost of borrowing and the lending. It impacts on investment, consumption, and inflation. So, you know, on the other side also, let's talk about the inflation bit. When you increase the lending rate, it means that it becomes more expensive for people to borrow. Mm -hmm. So people won't borrow. And when people don't borrow, it means there'll be less money in the yeah, system right. for people to buy which will then drop inflation. Mm. We, do, we, did, we did inflation the other yeah. time. It's the it, rate at which the cost of goods exactly. increase yeah. over time. So when people have more money to buy, yeah. <laughs> and it says, yeah, it's just... Yeah, it's like oh, your no, students, like, it's like your students... It's very, very serious <laughs> students because, you know... So, yeah. so basically mm -hmm. that. Now we'll listen to the governor of the Bank of Ghana's okay. recent announcement on the policy rate. And then maybe all of you spoken about will finally sit and make sense. And everything he will say won't be ambiguous and uh, news to IS. Right. All right, so let's listen to him briefly. All right, so um, even before we get into that particular one, uh, talking about the monetary policy and all of that, do you think a lot of Ghanaians who want to go for even loans and all of that, they are aware of these technicalities because I was today years old when I got <laughs> to understand what monetary policy and all of these things are? Well, I, I, like I always say, thankfully, that's what this show is here to help address. Mm -hmm. And if you follow business news, these are things that I say we always talk about, like on Monday. But you we know spoke you mentioned about monetary it. policy, but we don't understand what the monetary policy is. Thankfully, today you have learned. The <laughs> monetary policy rate is basically the rate at which the Bank of Ghana lends to banks. Mm -hmm. So if you're planning of taking a loan, you should be interested because it would help inform you on what the going rate on the market mm -hmm. will be. Okay. Yeah. Also, in terms of the percentages... Yeah. How do we understand it? Okay. But before you answer that, mm. our video is ready, okay. so let's take a look. <laughs> inflation forecast suggests a slightly elevated profile from the possible upward revision in transport fares, adjustment in utility tariffs, higher export petroleum prices, and some pass-through of exchange rate depreciation. 
Overall, risks to inflation are slightly on the upside and will require close monitoring. And so that is the governor of the Bank of Ghana. Okay. And can you... <laughs> so in essence, mm -hmm. uh, the full clip would have, have him mentioned the fact that the monetary policy rate has been maintained at 29%. Okay. So what that means is that if banks go to borrow from the Bank of Ghana, the rate they will pay on that loan is 29%. Okay. So in essence, it means that you, Anita, when you go to your bank, of course, the bank will give you that 29% plus their interest. Okay. Yeah. Certain. Okay, so that, then, that's it. Okay, oh, that's th this it. one. So that's it. Oh, I, I understand <laughs> it perfectly. Okay. Uh, Mr. Nambo, you're, you're on the same page as you Absolutely. Yeah? Of course. Absolutely. Nice. We are we sharp brains and we understand it, but what, what else is... You have more questions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is that when you teach and the kids don't ask questions, it means that they really yeah. understood it. We, we understand it. Perfecto, okay. perfecto. Yeah. I mean, so, so going forward, when mm. um, I hear these things, mm -hmm. I understand where it's coming from. Exactly. And maybe I'll just bring out my calculator mm. and then calculate the percentage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so it means that if you go to the market today, you don't expect to get a loan anything below 29%. Excellent. Thank yeah. you so much, Mr. Obodu. Thank you. As always, breaking it down for us and letting us understand the nitty gritties when it comes to business uh, hopefully in my next life i'll do business in <laughs> senior high school or whatever but for now <laughs> let's focus on um, tv and see how everything goes but we're taking a quick musical break when we come back uh we have entertainment and some more right here on the show do stay no just monday um the news about funny face we have an update on that particular one so, like, um, I mean, the reports that came after said uh, nobody died. That's the, the good news about that issue. But um, he appeared in the circuit courts, that's Ofako circuit courts in Ewusu Senya East, in um, the central region, and he's been remanded in police custody for the next two weeks until his next appearance. And so for two weeks, he's going to be in there um, until they're ready to see him again. But he was arrested after hitting four people. For those who don't know the story, he was arrested for hitting some four to five people, um, a mother with two children and then a motor rider with his car in Kakraba Junction inside Kaswa. And so he's going to be there for a while. But like I said, um, none, of them are, none of them died, but they're receiving treatment. He said that they're receiving treatment in the Winneba Trauma and Specialist Hospital, while um, another one is receiving treatment in a local clinic um, inside Nyanyano in Kakraba. So that's the updates that we have on this particular issue from a funny face. Oh, one person with so much <laughs> and so many problems. I know, I know. Like, it's just too much for one person. So it's what, it's what, drink, uh, drunk driving? Drunk driving, yes, oh. drunk driving. Oh, man. Um, he's been arrested for that, so. I rest my case on this funny face thing. Yes, it looks like your, I've stated where I stand your views <laughs> yeah. are well heard. So yeah. fingers crossed. Whatever comes after, we'll definitely give you the updates mm. on that. But earlier, I mean, we played a video of King Promise. Now, he's going on an Asian tour. He's going on a tour in Asia. I mean, after Terminator, it was such a success. He even has a new one, Paris. It's like he has yeah. cracked some code somewhere. <laughs> and so he has from Terminator to Paris. So he's going on an Asian tour um, for, I think, three locations. So on the 26th of April, that's in Singapore. On the 27th of April, he's in Bali. And then on the 3rd of May, he's in Jakarta. Yes, I've got that right. So... We're looking forward to videos from there as well. So if you're in any of these places and you're listening, maybe you should pull up yeah. and support our Terminator. Nungwa Chris Brown. Eish. Wow, well, I didn't know about that you one. You didn't know? Well, oh. I know about the Nungwa. I didn't know about yeah, the Chris, exactly Brown. Chris Brown. Uh, from Nungwa. Yeah. Okay. Kakra, 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 kakra. He's good, isn't he? Mm. He's, he's not. He's trying. He's not he bad at all. He's trying, but he's he's not like a dancer. dancer. He's not like a Mr. Drew, yeah. but yeah. he does really yeah. dance. Yeah, oh, he, he, tries. Really tries. he tries. He really yeah. tries. Yeah. He really, really does. Better he really, really does. Yeah. yeah. The challenge is that he can Even on Twitter, Minita, most of us didn't know that he, he could, could dance move. like yeah. that. Yeah. He could move at all. Like, It's not like Oreku. Oreku can't move to Oreku, there's no for you. We should be quiet. Something is coming. He's working with dance god and things like that. Yeah. Oh, but... Charlie, that was good. <laughs> I'll show you what you can do. Yes, indeed. <laughs> good to see you. Uh, also, we spotted a song by Jackie uh, with Ludacris. Ooh. And, you know, most definitely, if you see two giants like this in the industry, we're just 
hoping that they're going to be releasing something fire very soon. Um, Jackie has been on a very, very nice pedestal very recently. She's been releasing songs back to back to back. And so um, we're looking forward to whatever record they're cooking in there. They should hurry up and feed us with this because we can't wait. We definitely can't wait for that. <sighs> looks really good it does jackie and ludacris that guy has <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some touching i i <laughs> the way is behind jackie is doing a good job oh yeah amazing uh, how many years has it been three four years i think since three. she really made a yeah name. three you to know. four and like the new crop maybe it's a new crop of artists i realized that they quietly work mm. you know mm. they're quietly or maybe the system has been set for them so now things are much yeah. smoother yeah. so they they get to go global easily I think it's easy. No, not that easy. It's easy now than, than let's say, I mean, 10, I think they're using ago. social media well. Exactly. You know, yeah, they're making so. good use of, mm. you know, the, the materials that they have. Because, I mean, you put your song out there, it travels like, you know, mm. um, hundred, a lot of people see you and then they want to connect with you. So I think they're just using it very yeah. well. But mm. it's easy. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Because if you the social media, you can DM someone. It will take they will not mind you. <laughs> they will the dance challenge you. and the music, and they still won't. Yeah. They, they yeah. Will so not. I, I get I get it. But that's that nice is, well, that's that's a big catch. When I move, nah, move. <laughs> that, that guy became popular in Ghana because of his hairstyle and all of those yeah. things. I mean, yeah. everywhere on every salon, <laughs> every every baba can do the haircuts. Yeah. And so, so I mean, I'm looking forward to so that particular yeah. record. And then finally, I mean, after emancipation in 2022, we haven't seen Will Smith in action mm -hmm. in a very long while. But the trailer for his Bad Boys 4 is out. Yes. I think Bad Boys is like one of those movies that when you see, you know that this is Will Smith. Like, it just has Will Smith in there. So the trailer is out for the, you know, part four. And I'm sure people are, fingers crossed, we're looking forward to that because Emancipation was, was a great movie. Emancipation was, was solid. I don't know if anyone watched Emancipation for Will Smith, but it was a very good movie. And so we're just hoping that he's going to be doing a lot more on... A this is good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hate him or love him. This, this, it's, this it's is solid. good. That means it's good. Yeah, you can't do anything about Absolutely it. Absolutely not. It's but great. emancipation didn't get the the buzz that it needed. It didn't. For some interestingly. reason. Interestingly, I think it was it was around the same time that everything was yes. happening. So I think people had mixed feelings. They didn't know, yeah. you know, whether to watch it again. I mean, they were just not not sure what was going on. But I yeah, mean, if they have time. a chance to re-market it, I think they should. I think from from what I heard from other people too, they were tired of Will Smith playing those epic, epic. You know, it's always yeah. like a black slave. You know, with the crying <laughs> and you know, talk about people were a bit tired. <laughs> tired of uh, Tubman had come out and emancipation and like the slave movies is okay. It's okay. Let's, it's okay. Let's, we let's, understand. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, okay. So. Yeah. So that's it. Anyways, entertainment today. Anytime. Okay. Yeah. What? Well, I haven't seen one, not to talk of four. <laughs> uh, you've not seen bad boys. No, I haven't. Wow. Yeah. Eric, have you? I think I've seen only one. Oh, Only okay. Yeah. Well, you didn't like it. Well. <laughs> you didn't like it? No, nah, I don't. I don't watch a lot of movies, so. <laughs> but it was, it was great. But why? It was okay, but. The scene, the scene where the tall boy comes to no, pick. No, enter the scene. Martin, I mean, that's the scene I was going to. But Lawrence comes to. I want you guys to go and see that's it. That's how you are just picking <laughs> out the scene. Charlie, you, you don't know what's happening. You're not no, going to pick out the scene. I haven't even seen scene. the trailer of one. You are talking about a scene. 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 How do I know? Take Martin Lawrence's daughter out and okay. then. Okay. Smith is the uncle and he comes and the boy is towering over them. You should go and check it out. I have a mental picture of it. Yeah. Martin Lawrence, come and pick up the. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, <Rick. laughs> yeah, good talk to us. <laughs> yes. What's happening in sports? Um, so we're still we're still mourning from the Black Stars. Good morning. Ghana Ghana has decided that the all of us. <laughs> yeah, I can't relate. <laughs> I have out. Ghana has decided that they're not going to win a match again. Mm. And we played against Uganda yesterday. Uganda, a very weak country in football, that are struggling before. The match, there were talks about them sacking their coach and going for a local coach, rebuilding and sacking their players and stuff. That's because they'd lost 4-0 to Comoros a few days before the friendly. And then they play against Ghana and managed to get a 2-2 draw. The coach was really excited with the yeah, results. Coach. Yes, because, of course, of course. yeah, like, mm -hmm. you just go a draw against Ghana. And for, for, for the Black Stars, it's just more concern for the team because... Just be, even beyond the result, it looks like it's becoming a bit of a, a norm now not to see the team win or to surrender winning positions. Uh, if you look at the records in 2024, so far we've played six games and we've won none of it. 
and it, it doesn't look too good for for the national team, uh, especially considering the teams that we faced in these six games. When you're playing the likes of Namibia, Cape Verde, Mozambique, uh, Uganda, you, you expect to get at least a win. And if Ghana cannot beat these type of teams anymore, then you're now asking yourself, wh which countries can Ghana beat? Hmm. And interestingly, the next fixture is against Mali, mm. uh, a team that just beat Nigeria by mm. two goals to nil. And Very, Ghana is going to play them. Yes, and in Nigeria a couple of months. Us. Yeah, Nigeria oh, beat us. So that's a World Cup qualifier. We already lost to Comoros. And so it's a match that we need to win in Bamako. Mali themselves are a very strong side, very quality team, did very well in the AFCON, probably could have gone all the way had it not been for the fact that they met the host Ivory Coast. Uh, but it's just really worrying for, for, for the Black Stars. And, you know, we went out to the street to really weigh in what people think about, really? about the national team. I can't team. wait for that. <laughs> yeah, so let's take a listen. So after the 2-1 um, with Nigeria, we are all hoping that Ghana was going to beat Uganda so that we were going to bring back the Lion Stars. But when Jeremy Koku scored the first goal, we were all happy that you're, you're, Ghana was going to win back. And we were happy but when we got at the full time, Uganda was able to score to make it 50. I was starting to go and but I still, I still love my country, I still love Black Stars. You see, even the Black Stars, eh, they don't know what to say. They are practically not serious. Because I don't understand. I don't understand. How can you take two red cards in one game? Just a game. And, and look at how they play. Look at how they play. I don't know whether it's like they are, they are not serious or they are being pampered or it's like someone is forcing someone to play. I don't, I don't understand. If you compare the Black Stars with me then and today's Black Stars, it's like, come and play for us. We are begging you. I think we need a lot of amendment in the team. We need Changes. Maybe bringing new players. But the foreign players, they feel like they are too comfortable. I don't know what they are thinking. I don't understand. I don't understand the the foreign players are too comfortable. So a few years ago, when we won, we went to the World Cup and stuff. We went with a lot of foreign players. Yeah, yeah, Google, the, 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 Every Prince Boateng, Cameron, and Cameron, all yeah. Those, yeah. A lot of, Even Karasi has had a period with the Black Stars you know, as well. I, I, I don't think that's the biggest problem, or I that's so. why we're not performing. It goes beyond that, and it's probably I think it's just a culture issue. Mm. Where, culture issue. Yeah. Yeah, Strap we've drop. become yeah we've become too used to ruling out things in a certain way that mm. now everyone has become so comfortable in the team. There are some things, it's like over a period, let's say if everyone reports for team dinner late, no one, I'm not saying this will happen in camp, but if everyone reports late, no one is really berating any, anyone for being late mm. or not showing commitment and training. Over a period, two, three years, it becomes the norm. Yeah. And now you realize that it goes beyond just what happens behind the scenes to actually reflecting the results in matches. So I feel it's a cultural issue in the team. Standards have been low at a point where people don't even need to be playing well for their clubs to play in the national team. And mm -hmm. so they're always assured of a position in, mm -hmm. the, in the team. Mm -hmm. And we've also not done well with facing our players. A lot of the older guys who are still getting called up into the team could perhaps make way for younger players so that, you know, the team starts to build chemistry at... Because the, the thing is that if 2021, you went to 30, 32-year-olds, 32-year-olds, and after, you know, being knocked out of the group stages, you decide that you're going to bring young players, mm -hmm. um, players from under 23 and all that, that... That and it's, if, even if you gave a chance to those young players, and once again you went out to the group stage, it would have been a learning experience for these young guys. Mm -hmm. But to bring the same players again, and then repeated failure, you don't go out. You don't really gain anything, do you? Because at a point, these guys will leave, mm -hmm. and you would have to give the young ones a chance. The earlier you give them a chance, the better you stand a chance of getting better in the future. That's how I see it. Don't you need the older people to give to bring some form of experience to the team? Yeah, there, yeah, there's a there's a thin line. Yeah. There's always a thin line. There was John Menzel, there was Stephen Apia, there was uh, ACN, there was a. Uh, but you know, all of these guys were. It was at a, if you remember, even the 2010 World Cup, Stephen Apia was coming off the bench. He wasn't a short starter. If Apia was in this Black Stars at that age, he would have been starting. Mm. 
Mm. And you see, I think those are some of the decisions that we need our technical team to be tough on. We need a coach who will say, I want this player to play here, and that is my final decision. Mm. It's almost as if some players are getting, you know, some bit of extra treatment and they're not they're not on the same level as anyone i, I don't like to, i don't like to mention names I, I that's that's just me i don't like to mention well, the senior players, mention is the after but, show mention but the senior I, players are getting some you know special treatment yeah, yeah I, I think so i think so and that's the that's the culture of the you know if you go to europe the, yesterday but um spain the man of the match in their match against brazil was a 16 year old kid mm. okay. you know what i mean lamar who plays for barcelona mm. i think it, it's just not reached that point in ghana here we just feel that it's, it's not, it even goes beyond football. You always have to go through the process. Or yeah, like no matter how good you are when you are young, you always feel that you have to go through some mm. process before you so get what, to the national team. That's the same team. in football. Yeah, as it's well. the same in football. Really, it's the same in football. Trust but me. But why should it be so? I mean, if someone is good, a person is good. Mm. Yeah, that, that that's how things are run outside there. But <laughs> in Ghana, Anyways. it's not. It's very different. Mm. Um, yeah, so. It's just, it's just quite disappointing. It's beyond that. us at this point. Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 not, we're not winning. No, right. Nothing seems to be going well. Just be, um, yeah. But yeah, just before <laughs> we go, uh, there were the Euro 2024 qualifiers. Okay. Um, the playoffs, you know, majority of the teams qualify, but there will be three slots left for six teams who go through a playoff. And that playoff was yesterday. Georgia was one of the teams that qualified. Mm. Uh, they beat Greece on penalties. If you, if you follow the story of Georgia, it's a very interesting one. It's the first time that they ever qualified for a major tournament. Um, I mean, if you do follow politics, history, Georgia only gained their independence after the collapse of the Soviet Union, I think around 19, in the early 1990s. And so they're a non-football nation, don't really have so, so much, much when yeah. it comes to resources for football. But to see them qualify for a major tournament in the Euros is, is really incredible. And their fans were really ecstatic uh, to, to witness history. It's something that they don't know if they might even see again. Mm. And you know, it's good to see some of these underdog stories play out. So the Euros will be in Germany later this summer. They, they they're going home. Easily. They're, 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 always, they're always there. So oh, there those are the groups. Yeah. Um, as you can see in your, sc in your screen, so, yeah, Germany will be host. Yes, and so Germany would be host as well. And you know, it just mm. makes for a very pleasant view, wow. and especially in Group D, where you have the likes of Netherlands, Austria, and France in the same group as well. Uh, so much, much That's later this summer. Yeah. Yeah. Spain, Croatia, Italy. Yeah. That's a tough one. I remember, it would be a very, very intriguing tournament. So, mm. yeah. yeah. Hmm. Anyways. All right, all right, cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. At least lifting our spirit a little bit with that Georgia <laughs> celebration. Uh, definitely seeing you tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow we end Ghana Month on yes. the afternoon. Show. Yes, yes, no, yes, yes. Yeah. We'll be playing some dress up. We, oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll do. Uh, we are playing dress up and all of that. So. Yeah, at least if Black Stars don't make us happy, we'll make ourselves, <laughs> we'll make ourselves happy. happy. Yeah. We'll make ourselves <laughs> happy. Ghana Month. Anyways, with that, I mean. Okay, you know, I'll ask you this tomorrow when we are wrapping up Ghana Month. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> I'm like, what are you... But okay. well, let's ask them a, a question of the day. What's okay. the funniest cutlery experience you've had? Like, so funny. Everybody was looking at you. Does it have to be you or does it, it have, have to be, be someone that Somebody I was you know. with? Okay. So, I mean. so we're at the restaurant about to eat kinky and the person took our fucking knife. <laughs> White man? I mean... No, Ghana, Ghana. Kinky. Ghana. Kinky. Ghana woman. Cantonment. <laughs> Accra kinky. But they put a fucking knife in there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, the person requested for it. To eat the kinky with the fish. Okay, and that's... Who eats kinky with fucking knife? How? Let's roll the air. Those who eat with the yam, uh, eat yam and plantain, contemporary stew with fucking, fucking knife. What's no, this? What, what, what's this? Your hand. Yeah. What, kinky. What, what How do you press for? the kinky and make the kinky go inside? <laughs> no, don't disrespect kinky like that. <laughs> That's been our show today. Wednesday down. We are back here tomorrow for our final day of the week. Yes. This has been the afternoon show. Thank you to everyone who's passed through the show. Adwa, thank you. Thank you. Real cool. And my name is Godwin Nambu. My name is Anita Ikea Ikufu. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good afternoon. Yeah.